Pozarządem. Program o organizacjach pozarządowych. Good evening. My name is Martine and you are listening to Prismat Radio. Our topic of volunteering is continuing one more time. You already heard about volunteering from a perspective of foreign volunteers who are staying here in Krakow for nine months and now you will hear some more. So me and all the other volunteers that you hear here, you already heard some of them, are a part of EVS project here in Krakow with our association stream, Youth Development and Integration Association. For the ones who are listening to us for the very first time, I will introduce EVS a little bit to you. So when we say, and when I say, that I am an EVS volunteer, it means that I got here with the help of EVS, the European Voluntary Service. This EVS is European Union program that promotes mobility of young people through international activities with a non-formal education dimension, such as youth exchanges, voluntary service, youth initiatives and training of youth workers. EVS offers young people the opportunity to volunteer up to 12 months in another country. So that's exactly what we did. We took this chance and now we are spending our time here in wonderful Krakow. When you're a foreigner and new in a country, it's always good to connect with other people, foreign and local, so you wouldn't feel lonely and so you could have more fun and more experience. It's also good to try to use the skills and experience that you already have. Every person has something to offer. And when it comes to having a lot of work and life experience, already in a very young age, I have the perfect person here to talk about that. But before I introduce my special guest for today, and we are back in Radio Prisma studio and we're continuing with our topic of volunteering and how to use the skills and experience that you already have. I promise that I will introduce my guest. So here he is. Good evening, Fran. Good evening, Martina. Can you first tell us your full name and surname? My full name? Yes. <laughs> my full name is Francisco Jose Castellano Galpan. Okay, so you have actually two names and two surnames. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you from? I'm from Spain. Canary Islands. Canary Islands, yes. You mm -hmm. always emphasize that. Oh, and <laughs> I hear it's a very, very nice place. So tell us just a little bit about yourself. You're from Spain, from Canary Islands. Uh, so what else? I'm actually a regular guy um, that going deeply in my uh, hobbies. I love to travel mm -hmm. a lot and try to learn more about other culture, uh, other people. So it's something that um, I really love to do. And otherwise, um, I'm a social educator, mm -hmm. uh, which, means, uh, which means that um, I'm used, I'm, I'm ready and I have the ability to work with people at risk in the society mm -hmm. and also for environmental issues. And with this, I learned a lot um, from my degree and I'm trying to, to take those abilities to do it in the real life, in my daily, uh, daily life here in, in Krakow. Yes, and that's exactly why I invited you here mm -hmm. today. But first, um, you, s you said that you really like to travel. Mm -hmm. I know that, of mm -hmm. course. But can you tell us how many countries you already visited? Well, um, uh, exactly, I'm not sure, but around 11, 12, 13, around. I know yeah. you, were, you were in Croatia, which is yeah, my country. Yeah, I was in Croatia, exactly. And mm -hmm. you went to Belgium, Germany, Belgium, Slovenia. Belgium, Germany, Austria, Slovenia, now Poland. I was before here in Krakow, mm -hmm. uh, before EVS. I've been in the United States, uh, in the northeast side. Um, yeah, France is coming, and other countries, of course, is coming, so. Wonderful, mm. yeah. I would like to travel some more, definitely. Um, so... You said that you already have your degree as mm -hmm. a social educator, mm -hmm. and I know you have some work experience, but mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that just a little later. But tell me, how did you decide to apply for EVS? Actually, it was totally improvised, um, because uh, last year when I was finishing my degree, and uh, I was in uh, Erasmus in Austria mm -hmm. for six months, and after that I came back to Canary Islands to finish my fin final thesis work. And after that, I applied for a project uh, from Canary Islands to travel around Canary Islands, but in a no bad way. And after this, I was thinking to do some other, uh, other studies about uh, professional studies, mm -hmm. but actually, I don't, I didn't feel like to do it. So I just decided to do something uh, around Europe, 
and I knew a little bit uh, about EVS, so I decided to apply for. And actually, I didn't follow any uh, website, and just I'm in some Facebook groups, so mm -hmm. I found there. And mm. that's how you found the project. Yeah, exactly. And, and actually, but it was in around one week. It was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember when we talked about that, that mm. you really, you applied and right next week you already got an answer. Yeah, exactly. Right? I came yeah. back uh, from this travel around Canary Islands around the 3rd of September and I was one week thinking what's my next step and I just decided to, 11 or 12th of September, I decided to check the Facebook group and I found, of course, there the, the announcement. And... Yeah, in five days, I think I bought the tickets and I was accepted and I came. You are, you are so lucky. Yes, Do I you know. know that because <laughs> know. me and many other people, we had to wait for a long mm -hmm. time. Um, so for the ones of you who, who don't know um, how to apply uh, or how to find the projects, there are many different ways. Like Franz said, uh, if you are in some groups on, on Facebook uh, where people are posting uh, different things like volunteer opportunities or even um, just mm, stuff about traveling abroad, you can always find something about EVS there, I think. Mm -hmm. um, there is also a web page, uh, EVS, uh, European Voluntary Service, and now this new program uh, is coming that is very, very similar to, to EVS practically the same uh, European Solidarity Corps. So you can check the projects on all of those web pages. Uh, you can also check uh, Stream's web page, um, which I will mention in the end, because we are always um, putting their information about available positions in, in Stream, um, and also uh, about positions in other countries mm -hmm. with projects who are already approved. So if you're listening to us, uh, and if you're thinking about going for a project somewhere abroad, don't forget to check um, the Stream's webpage, the Stream's Facebook, or just if you have someone who would like to do it and you know, uh, and you know that person, uh, feel free to recommend. Uh, but coming back to, to you, Fran. Mm -hmm. So you decided to apply and in a very short uh, amount of time yeah. you, you got your answer and you got here. Um, but because the decision was so fast, mm -hmm. was it a hard decision? Was it hard to leave home? Um, yes and no. What the thing? And um, when uh, um, coming back when it was in Erasmus, uh, actually the summer, right the summer before to do Erasmus, I did this project in the United States. So that could be my first, uh, like my first place that I really went out of home. And that was the first time Well, of course, my parents, more my, my mom, my dad is more like, of course, you have to travel to know more things, you know, but my mom was a bit more proactive and, and a bit worried about what's what could happen to me, no? Mm -hmm. Like every mother. Exactly. So she was like, I remember like, no, you're not going. But of course, uh, finally <laughs> I did. So now it's, I don't know, the third or fourth time that I'm out at home. So they now, somehow they are used, they are used to to see me not at home. Not like, at home. Yeah. Yeah, it's mm, similar with my parents because mm -hmm. I, I didn't study in my hometown. I was far away and then I was working and now I'm here for nine months. I can't say that they are too happy, but still, they, they know that if we have opportunities like we have, that we mm -hmm, should really, mm -hmm. really use them. Mm. Uh, so that was about your family, but how did your friends react? Did they <laughs> say, go Fran, or you're leaving again? Yes, actually, actually, that's the thing. Again? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's always the, the, they react in this way. But they are used to. They know exactly how I am and what I like, so they just... Okay, Fran, just when you are there, please tell me where you are exactly. I will go to visit you. That's ah, the, the that's next nice. answer. Yeah. yeah, actually, it's the same thing with my friends now, mm. but mm. Um, they're still asking, okay, when are you finally coming home home? When are we going to be able to see you every week? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I can't answer that, really. Yeah, exactly the same. <laughs> actually, the last project that I did, and friends and family, they were like, this is the last time, right, that you are going out. <laughs> and I'm like... Yeah, yeah, I hope so. The next week, I'm out again. You're out. Yeah, oh. always. Always have them. I think but it's a nice experience. Almost I'm trying to cheers them up to do it as well. Because it's a great experience where yeah. you're 
getting a lot of rich uh, people and rich culture and other. It doesn't matter if it's Poland, if it's Germany, just go out, you will learn a lot about Definitely. yourself and others. So Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so we said that our project lasts for nine months. Mm -hmm. Now we have just three more months to go. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to think about leaving Poland yeah, yet. Me neither. Um, <laughs> But we got to spend six months here in Krakow. Do you like Krakow? What do you think about the city? Actually, I'm here uh, not only because I saw the announcement, uh, the Albert Testament in Facebook, because it was uh, before, one week before, when it was in, in Austria, mm -hmm. uh, doing Erasmus, I just came for one week uh, with one of my best friends, and we really, I really uh, get fall in love with the city. Yeah, and this was me. like... Mm, the thing to say, okay, I'm going to Krakow, yeah. The, okay, mm. um, so you like Krakow, yeah. you like to travel, yeah. um, but what do you do here? Can you can you tell us a little bit about your daily activities and yeah, where do you work? Mm -hmm. um, in my project, CV's projects, I'm working in a kindergarten. Uh, the number is kindergarten 179, and in which I'm like a teacher assistant, Mm -hmm. And also Spanish teacher somehow. Obviously. Now I have uh, once per week, uh, one hour, around one hour to teach a little bit of Spanish so the children can learn other language, not only English, that is their uh, regular curriculum in, in kindergartens. And aside of that, I'm also helping to the teacher to create activities, to, uh, to make games, um, these things. Everything that I can... Uh, I can do, I can, I can give, uh, I'd be able to, to do it. And how old are your kids? How old? They are around five, six years old. Okay. Yeah. And how is their Spanish? Actually getting better. Yeah. yeah? They, they are good. They are good. They know already perfectly the numbers and mm -hmm. the color. So, ah, and basic say about, uh, hola, como estas? Like, hello, how are you? Those things. Oh, Very it must nice. be so cute to yeah, see yeah, speaking so Spanish, nice, so nice. little Polish children. Yeah, yeah, because also something that is really cute is uh, when I'm trying to speak uh, in Polish and they don't understand, of course, I have to improve a little bit mm -hmm. on my Polish. Uh, they try to do it in English and if it doesn't work, of course, they try it in Spanish. So it's so nice. Yeah. Oh, it's mm -hmm. so cute. Yeah, mm -hmm. kids, kids are mm -hmm. amazing. Um, what about Polish food? Because I think it's pretty different from where you're from. It's a little bit different, I have to say, yes, that's true. But uh, I'm just a kind of a sweet tooth. I really like uh, sweets in here in Poland, uh, food in general. So if you have to say me or if you give me the chance to choose one, it's going to be hard. First, because I, I'm not sure about the Polish name. <laughs> And second, um, because I actually love food in general. Yeah, m mm. me too. And yeah. I really like to uh, find different new foods Absolutely. from different exactly. countries. And even uh, I remember, I think it was the Christmas dinner when some of the volunteers who stayed here, we got together. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you made like the most simple thing, uh -huh. which was so amazing yeah. and <laughs> so tasty that like everybody was just mm -hmm. grabbing on it. And I think we ate all of it. Yes, actually. And it was just <laughs> potatoes with sauce, but yeah. it, it was so good. I yeah. think it's maybe similar to pierogi, which really seems like a really simple thing, mm -hmm. but they're so yummy. Mm -hmm. And exactly. I repeat it every time. And do, cool. do, do, do you like them? Uh, pierogi? Pierogi? Yeah, yeah, of course. And of which course. ones are your favorite so far? My favorites, I could say cheese. Yeah, with cheese, they are the best. The sweet cheese or... I don't remember exactly if we're sweet, uh, sweet or salty. I don't really remember. But the remember it was cheese. It was cheese. I love it. Yeah. One that I don't good. like and uh, it's a bit sad for me is the with cabbage. I tried it and I didn't like it too much actually, I have to say. But Yeah, th that one is maybe a little bit strange. Mm -hmm. A little bit strange. But uh, almost every other I, I, really, I yeah. really love. Yeah, exactly. Um, did you go home uh, since you got here? No, actually I didn't. No, so mm -hmm. six months already with yeah. no home. Mm -hmm. And do you miss it? How do you feel about that? Yeah, of course. Um, you get to one point that you are missing uh, home, friends, the food that you, you used to eat uh, at home or even outside in other places. And But I think that it's also 
inside me. Like, I know how to deal with it. And mm -hmm. of course, I know that someday I will come back home because, come on, it's Canary Islands and I really miss sun. And now the weather is getting better here in Krakow. But of course, in winter, for example, we were all the time almost sunny every day in Canaries. So for me, I was missing too much sun, I have to say. And about home, of course, I miss them. I, I, I miss my family. But actually, I think my family is, is happy that I'm not there too much. Maybe my brother, he's the, the, the most uh, happy right now because we were sharing... Uh, um, uh, oh, I didn't come a month. The room. Oh, room. We, we are sharing room. So now it's for him. So he's you know. got the whole room by exactly like, just, just for him. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine he realized yeah, 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 that. Yeah, yeah. And yes, for six months we had winter, and now finally the weather is getting better yeah. with more sun, with getting warmer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, really much more sun. I have yeah. to say I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. Me too. Uh, but very happy mm -hmm. because I spent the last seven years on the coast of Croatia, and it's always sunny there. Really, mm -hmm. really always, always sunny and and hot. Um, and winter doesn't last for six months, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but anyways, we are all all uh, happy about the weather and the sun that is coming. And I think we're going to have a chance now to do many things outside. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just to go for a walk next to the river mm -hmm. or just hang in the in the park. And mm -hmm. I really ca can't wait for it. Actually, right now, I just start to make sport uh, outside. Where? Like, I'm, close, I'm living in Salvador, close to the uh, riverside, so I'm running there, I'm doing jogging and running there, nice. so it's really nice. It's I would love to. It's sunny and I hate fresh, running. It's, it's great. I hate running, I can't do it. <laughs> I can do every other sport besides running, it's terrible for me, but I, I, I know music, it's good. It's nice. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I believe you, but just, I, I don't know what's me, maybe <laughs> in my past life I was a runner and now I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you for answering these questions. So, Fran, um, you know that I invited you here tonight for a special reason, and that is because I know that you studied a very interesting topic, like in a very interesting field, and that you already have some work and volunteering experience um, even before coming here. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. Um, to sum up a little bit uh, how I said before, um, I've been working with children, uh, even when it was in the United States. It was in mm -hmm. a summer camp as a counselor. And after that, um, meanwhile, I was studying university. I was in an NGO um, working with children and teenagers. Uh, on one side, uh, with children uh, that they don't have parents, mm -hmm. so they are in a shelter, in a children's shelter. And... After that, I was also uh, with children and teenagers, um, giving some extra lessons uh, about any subject um, after after school in the afternoons and evenings uh, about maths, languages, um, uh, geography, mm -hmm. everything. Whatever they needed. Exactly, exactly. If they have homeworks about English, for example, so I help them. I help them to um, to this subject. And after that, uh, I've been uh, doing those. Oh, absolutely were volunteering service mm -hmm. and one of them uh, when I finished this volunteering service I was on uh, the practice lesson for my final thesis in the mm -hmm. university so I, I was with um, uh, gender uh, violence with women that suffer gender violence um, we were doing different activities uh, to make and build the self-confidence mm -hmm. um, and every, everything that we need. We had uh, a schedule with uh, psychologist um, staff, with uh, social skills and all of those topics that can help and improve um, the life and the person of those women. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I know you... Uh from before for six months already mm -hmm. so we have had some chance to speak about mm -hmm. your work uh, and I always thought when you told me about it that it's it's amazing because mm -hmm. you really have experience of working with different groups so children and teenagers and women who suffered from gender violence um, but how did you decide to start that kind of work because I don't think it's easy and I don't think it's for everyone yeah I agree absolutely that and actually before um, study social educator I was studying engineering Whoa. Uh, this is totally yeah a field totally different and uh, but 
somehow I give up because uh, I gave up because I didn't like um, how to not don't go deeply how how the studies were organized and one of the sites uh, personally I really like it's like help people in general okay and then I love the environment too much so looking for something that they can study with those topics and issues was social education I was also looking for uh, social workers because it's like the closest uh, let's say mates that we have in professionally but uh, social educa- uh, social worker were a bit uh, too much I would say bureaucracy mm-hmm. it's like uh, in the office you know paperwork exactly and, yeah. and that's I don't like it too much so social educator was the other side like be at front with people like helping directly and I think this is the uh, of course I would say it's the most beautiful um, field because you are with the person you are listening you are understanding and this person feel mm, comfortable feel good because someone is listening you know and yeah. almost the problems that happen of those people that they are at risk is because no one listen yeah. so I think it's very nice but as you said not everybody re- is ready for, for this that. kind of yeah, yeah I think it could be really challenging mm-hmm. uh, but on the other hand just like you said you really uh, have a feeling that you're you're doing something that you're making a difference you're exactly. in the field you're exactly. with people uh, and that's exactly why I studied psychology mm-hmm. um, I mean there, there are different uh, types of, of psychologists and some of us are working also in an office with different tests and developing different tools but I definitely just like you want to be with the people in the field and just working with them and doing something and making a difference because that's what makes me happy and it's never easy when you deal with people any kinds of people because we're all different and we all have our hopes and dreams and fears um but i think it can be really really amazing mm-hmm. exactly. so i i understand what exactly. you're saying definitely um did it take some time for you to adapt to the work you did like w- was it was it hard at first so then it got easier or did you just like, or it didn't get really easier as much as you found different uh, coping mechanisms, different tools for you to use? Mm-hmm. In the beginning, of course, you are like the new. So you are like looking around, watching what others are doing. Mm-hmm. And then as a human, you have your own way, uh, way to work. Yeah. So I copy some things that I really like from other people and uh, learn a lot of them. And then I make it uh, for, my, for me, for myself. So then I can work with everything. At the beginning, everything uh, and every uh, kind of uh, topic, uh, it's hard at the beginning, of course. But then it's 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 getting better, of course. Yeah, it's getting easier. Mm-hmm, yeah. Something else that I didn't explain, that now it's coming, you know, refreshing memories. Uh, what I did also, I was working uh, as a volunteer in a hospital with the children that they were in the... Uh, um, I don't remember exactly what the name in English, but it's when they have some cancer mm-hmm. and they have to stay in a special place, you know. Uh, were they taking chemotherapy? Exactly, or? Ah, yes, okay. exactly. It's like a closed space where not everybody can go inside yeah. because, yeah. So, so I was working there also for a couple of months and there is I learned a lot from those children because it's like, you know that they are really bad and healthy. Yeah. But you learn that they are taking their life how it will be the last time, the last day, you know. And I learned a lot from them. Like from outside, from myself, every time that I was going there, they were happy with a smile, looking at you like, yeah, you, you're here, you're trying to make some games to me. And I knew, of course, that that girl or that boy, it was... Uh, had some painful inside because of course with therapy and yeah you know, they don't feel exactly the best but I learned a lot from that field could be one of the best that I've ever worked yeah I think that working with kids is uh, in in many ways really rewarding because I mean you, you should know it from your kindergarten that when you when you come there when you enter the room I'm sure the kids just look at you and mm-hmm. run to you and mm-hmm. smile at you and mm-hmm. Even, you know, Venla was here and she said um, that that she's also our volunteer. She's from Finland. She's Mm -hmm. super nice. She's working Mm -hmm. with kids uh, in in a preschool. 
And she said, the best part of my job is that I get to spend my time with kids because even if I'm not feeling so good, they will always just run to me, hug me, and then mm. I cannot feel bad anymore. Exactly. So really working with exactly. kids is very, very rewarding. And they're taking things much differently than mm -hmm. um, exactly. adults. Like they will It, always give you more. And those moments is when you realize that your problems or your troubles, they are nothing. They are really small compared with other problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so from all the experience you have from, from this work with different uh, groups and, and different, not just different age groups, but also different groups of people, um, what, what kind of skills did you get? What kind of experience did you get, uh, except from what you said that you really learned to take, mm -hmm. uh, like life in a, in a different way and maybe not to think about your troubles as they are big? Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, um, self-confidence. That uh, I was a bit uh, embarrassed about everything, and after after all this experience, I'm like, this is nothing, you know. And meanwhile, you are working, you are improving yourself a lot. And right now, um, I have le leadership. Mm -hmm. I can I can improvise uh, whenever you want. I have more games and activities at, the, uh, at my in my brain, so I can do everything and what one moment you know and those things are which i learned uh, from the university from the those experiencing um, other you know uh, ngos or volunteering other exactly volunteers mm -hmm. yeah and um, i'm sure that one of the reasons why you got accepted into this project is because you really mm -hmm. had some knowledge and also mm -hmm. some skills mm -hmm. and experience mm -hmm. um And here you, you, I think you really got to use what you know, working with kids, that some skills that you had and uh, the knowledge you had before, mm -hmm. that you managed to put them to good use here. Exactly. Yeah. Always when you are in with uh, different people, uh, if it's working with again, uh, gender violence or if you're working with uh, children in, uh, in the hospital, you know already some things mm -hmm. and you can adapt it, uh, focus in this, in For this them. target. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how it's what it's happening right now in the kindergarten here in in Krakow, uh, which I know some things, but of course is other culture, is other language, other language. and they have to focus. Also, they are, they are around uh, five, six years old, so I have to focus, of course, in in this uh, target exactly. Yeah, and mm -hmm. adapt the exactly activities adapt. that exactly. you want to do mm -hmm. to them. Um, What do you think that is the most important thing when you're starting something like your work? So when you're working with kids in a hospital, when you work with um, women that's been abused, or even when you're working with kids who are speaking different language, what do you think that is the most important thing when you decide to do something like that, something new, challenging? Probably I would say the first thing is not have produce, uh, produce uh, in your brain, in your mind. Like when you start to work with uh, something or with someone uh, new, would say, um, you see that these people probably has passed by other people mm -hmm. that they are tried in the same way as the society tra treat them. Yeah. So I have it this in my mind, and all the time when um, I start to work with someone, I try to make a reset in my brain, like. This is something of someone new with a lot of troubles and problems uh, in, in her backpack, you know, in, the, in her back. Um, so I have to think in a different way to try to get um, closer to that person. So we can understand each other and we can grow up in some way together. So this person can improve, depending, of course, where... where yeah, not, you where mean are, you know? not to have some opinions already made before exactly. you even meet the person exactly. to give them a chance. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I uh, I agree, actually, because I had uh, this wonderful experience. I was still in university and I was always trying to find different places uh, and different um, projects to volunteer in. And this one time, one of my friends asked me if I want to go to volunteer with her just for a day. Mm -hmm. Because she usually volunteers in this, uh, it was like... Um, home for troubled boys, for troubled teenagers. And the kids were there for many reasons. Some had uh, problems in their families, so they had to be placed there. 
others had some problems with the law, but they were underage, so they put them in that in that place, or just for different reasons. And you know, when you have an institution like that, usually people have a lot of uh, prejudice towards those those guys. Mm-hmm. But I have to tell you that when we got there, it was. Um, it was a small volunteering action where we were all cleaning the yard that they have because they, they live in this really big house. Uh, they have a playground mm-hmm. for for um, football and for basketball. And they also have like a small, small garden with trees, with grass. So they wanted to um, renew it, you know, to clean it up from all the trash, to paint the fence again, just to, to make some order because spring was coming, ju- just like now. And also they the people who work there saw it as an opportunity to invite the public a little bit closer to those guys. So me and my friend were there and also some other volunteers, but also all the guys from, from, the, um, from the home. And they were amazing. They were just happy that we're there. They, was, they were helping us, asking us, I don't know, what we're studying or if we are from the, the city, uh, asking us to help them with something or if we would ask them to help us, I don't know, to carry something or whatever. They were really, really super nice and they really wanted to cooperate. I mean, you, can, you, you could see that they are, you know, like teenage guys who mm-hmm. want to present themselves like they are the funniest yeah. and the best but mm-hmm. it's normal I mean mm-hmm. it, it's teenagers it's kids mm-hmm. and they were really really sweet to us and even after we were done with all the cleaning we stayed with them a little bit to play basketball to play football it was really nice mm-hmm. and the best thing is even like a few weeks after it finished and I would pass that street alone they would always say hi yeah so it was a really really nice mm-hmm. experience so I agree when you say that you need to give people a chance and yes. just reset your your brain um so okay you 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 have really a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge um and you had the chance to use the skills and knowledge you have here with the polish kids in Mm -hmm. your preschool um but is there something that you learned here something that i learned here something new Uh, maybe polish (laughs) (laughs) um Actually, I th- actually I didn't think about it already, you know, because uh, I'm just living here. Probably when I came home, I will see th- I will see what I learned here. Yeah. But right now that I'm here, I didn't think about it. But probably, to of course the childrens and me we don't speak the same language. Yeah. So we have to communicate with body languages. So maybe I'm getting better in think what they trying to to say or mm-hmm. what they want to do or or maybe yeah yeah i could remind um how w- when i was a child mm, all those memories br- uh, came to my mind uh, because all the time that for example we are in the uh, playground they are playing and you know having fun with simple things and i'm looking at them like yeah, I remember when I was a child, I was looking at them, I was playing like them with a, a, a huge I- imagination with, I don't care, everything else, just I'm focused in the game that I'm doing right now. And yeah. maybe that's the little things uh, that I would uh, should, yeah, somehow should think like, there are problems, of course, but not always is like an adult problem. It's like we, we, we should bring again memories from our childhood and try to be a bit more... Uh, yeah, a bit more child. Yeah, I, like I, I agree. Hmm. I, I agree, definitely. Because I also now, when you start to talk about it, I also remember when I was a child, um, I was growing up, you know, in Croatia mm-hmm. in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we didn't have computers when I was six. Yeah, you know, we exactly. didn't have um, smartphones when exactly. I was little. We had yards, we had trees, uh, bikes, mm. rollerblades, mm. skateboards, scooters. And I, I know that during summer, uh, we would spend just the whole day outside yeah. doing nothing but everything mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like two sticks and and a stone we will make up a new game or just if we had some i don't know a football or a basketball i mean one time we played basketball on rollerblades so really you don't need that much when you're a exactly. child and you can really use your mm-hmm. imagination so maybe um as we are getting older we should remind ourselves exactly. more often yeah, yeah, yeah. and Absolutely. just let us play mm-hmm. 
because when you know that we had this um, midterm training mm -hmm. connected to EVS in, mm -hmm. in Torun, and in one part of the training, they gave us this huge piece of paper uh, and just among uh, other things. And if we wanted, we could have read, like, written or, or draw something on that huge piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And it was wonderful for me to see people who are, I can't even say teenagers anymore because we had people who are 18, 19, so still in their teenage mm -hmm. years, but people who are 27, 28, 29, uh, sitting on the floor with some crayons and drawing something on the floor, you know, completely in their own imagination, not using the phone, not mm -hmm. wondering is there something else they should be doing. They were just sitting on the floor and drawing. And it was amazing, mm -hmm. you know, to, to see that we didn't forget that we still have that ability. Yeah. We just need to remind ourselves to do it and to give us a chance mm -hmm. that it, we all, that don't always have to be in front of a screen or with some technology that we can really do something so simple and still enjoy. Yeah, so it's that's what when those things happen. Right? Yeah. yeah it's it's, really nice. it's amazing especially mm -hmm. when you have a group of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I and mean, when the group dynamics is good, it's mm -hmm. it's amazing. Actually, I, I saw Dima because Dima was with me. He's your roommate and he's like really tall guy. Uh a lawyer and you know always yeah, yeah, yeah. so so fancy and always so so nice and then i see him like huge almost two meters and he's drawing on the floor it was it was so cute mm. so wonderful mm -hmm. um so yeah i think both of us had i mean all of us not both of us but all of us all 29 of us here had a wonderful chance to to use our skills and and knowledge and everything but now i i'm, I'm thinking a little bit because we have a few volunteers here who just finished high school mm -hmm. so they uh they didn't go to university yet they still don't have some real or or big uh, work experience they I, i'm sure that people who are listening to us they they're thinking okay but i just finished high school what can i offer what are my skills what would you say to those people actually it doesn't matter if you just finished the high school right now because for sure everybody has something to share has something to do so in, we have in our in stream uh, people that they, they are around 15, 19, um, uh, 18, 18, 19. 19. And I, of course, they have to, a lot of things to, to do with children because they, they, they have or sisters or brothers, so they have family or they have friends which they have uh, brothers, sisters. So all the time we are connecting with, uh, with children in this case because we are working in the kindergarten. And, and actually thinking about it, if I knew before, to start the university, probably I will I will do a gap year as well doing uh, EVS. Yeah, sure. me too. Actually, for sure. Me too. I wouldn't go right away mm. into university. So yes, I would I would say that that those people actually have a wonderful opportunity because, like you said, everyone has something to mm -hmm. offer. So even if you are just out of high school, I'm sure there is something you can do. Like exactly. maybe you can draw. Maybe you're creative. Maybe you're doing some um photos or mm -hmm. maybe you're making small movies with uh, like for, for youtube maybe you like sports exactly uh sometimes for example i think i'm quite good drawing but i i, I never thought about it and actually you're a great uh, drawer so you, you can share even more sometimes we are not uh we think that our skill is not important enough to be shared and yeah. actually that's not the right way of thinking. Yeah, and sometimes for some people, you cannot say that they have some, I don't know, super developed skill, like mm -hmm. they are not the best players or they are not the best mus musicians, mm -hmm. but they have energy. Exactly. You know, energy that really motivates people, that mm, puts people to to work, that um, lifts them up. So those things are also very important, especially mm -hmm. when you have a big group. Uh, so just if, if you are um, a positive person, like you don't need to have anything else, just be a positive person exactly. and, and apply. Don't worry, like the, the skills that you need, you will get them here and you will learn even more, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot more. Um, would you like to add something else to, to all of this that, that we said so far? I think everything, almost everything is already said. But uh, other that I didn't uh, talk uh, talk about about it, and I said uh, once that um, one of my favorite fields right now is the environment thing, 
And here in Krakow, I have the chance to try to do this positive footprint because we know that, uh, unfortunately, it's a bit polluted in, in uh, Krakow. It's like one of the most uh, polluted cities in, yeah. in Europe. And it's nice that the government is trying to, to deal in the best way as possible. It's giving some free plants uh, to the population to... To try yeah, to let's fight let's just uh, specify that the air is polluted. Yeah, exactly. Air is polluted. Air is polluted. The, the city is pretty clean, yeah, actually. Clean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and exactly. really nice. Yeah, I have to say that one of my friends that came last night uh, from Spain, the first reacted uh, from her was like, "Oh, the city is pretty clean." Yeah, so actually it is. The only bad thing I would say is the air. Yes, but it's nice mm-hmm. that the government is trying to help in that way. And also, uh, I love uh, environment a lot. Um, I'm trying to take care of. Everything that I can, I can do. I'm trying to follow this zero waste uh, life uh, style. So I think it's important also to create conscience uh, in this in this point. So yeah, and and actually, Stream as as association is doing a lot of things. For mm-hmm. example, we are collecting uh, plastic bottle caps mm-hmm. because they can be uh, used after, and they. Uh, I know people are collecting them for charity. Not yeah. even, not just in Poland, but also in Croatia. Yeah, yeah, Schools are well. doing it, yeah. and in Spain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, even in our office, we have uh, this special box for paper yeah. and plastic. Special box, you know, for mixed exactly. waste. And we are always trying to um, reuse the paper we already used. So it's. It's nice to to work somewhere where you see that the people really care about the environment, exactly. and mm-hmm. like I'm if I'll find some some project uh, in any country actually that is really taking care of the nature, uh, I will I will try to join it because okay, so I it's have, really I have nice. One nice, uh, I would say something about it. Uh, one of the projects that I did last summer. Uh, that they comment about travel around Canary Islands as some nomad. The project is called uh, Ruta Siete, okay, where 45 students from anywhere, from Spain, from Belgium, for example, this year we had uh, a nice guy from Belgium. And something that, of course, it's uh, important is you need to uh, speak Spanish a little, a, little, a little bit. So what we did in this project is... Uh, during 45, uh, 35 days, and you are traveling around Canary Islands, but in the self, um, in the, yeah, to try to give the most positive uh, footprint as possible. And as humans, we cannot uh, like treat bad the nature. So we are uh, doing some uh, reforestation, like replanting, because we had some problems about fire on, uh, on the countryside, for example, or mm-hmm. in the forest. So we're trying to, to make some replants or, or clean up um, a huge beach uh, about plastic. Um, yeah, everything dust that, that we see. So this could be a nice, uh, for example, project in Canary Islands. Yeah, So it sounds it sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen now that people are really trying to, uh, like, trying to and starting to be more aware mm-hmm. of the problem with plastics. So they are. I know that I, I'm not sure actually in which country, but they are collecting all the plastics from the beach and they are making jewelry and different things of yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It's really nice, exactly. and I really, I really love those projects. Um, so I think we covered a lot of things mm, today. Yeah. Um, is there, I mean, I, I always at the end ask my guests, would you recommend people to go volunteering? But so far the answer was always yes. What would you say? Okay, I would say no then. <laughs> <laughs> but why if I have to say no? Because um, the thing is, after two, you finished AVS, you, are, you, you make a huge relationship with those people. So after that, you are missing them too much. You get like deeply um, depression like thinking about them but of course I would recommend it because after that you have a place in any country around Europe that to go to exactly to go to and I that's, agree it's very nice I agree so like I said we covered many topics uh, and it was really really nice talking to you uh, we are now at the end of this broadcast and just before we finish don't forget uh, that you can follow our organization stream on Facebook 
at Stream Association, also on Instagram, Stream-Association. And you can get a lot of information on our webpage, stream.org.pl. Thank you, Fran, for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you for giving all of this wonderful information. Uh, thank you, Agnieszka, for all the technical support. Um, and thank all of you for listening to us. We'll be back next month. Stay excellent.